the execution and the body of Marie Antoinette. The crisp autumn air of Paris held a chilling tension on the 16th of October 1793. The Place de la Revolution, once a vibrant square, now echoed with the grim anticipation of a public execution. Its centrepiece, the infamous guillotine, stood stark against the sky, its blade glintering under a watchful sun. Today it awaited a queen. Marie Antoinette, the former Queen of France, had walked a path from gilded cage to public condemnation. Months earlier, her husband, King Louis XVI, had met his end on the same scaffold. Now she stood accused of treason, her once opulent life stripped bare. The trial was a mockery of justice, charges ranging from depleting the treasury to incestuous relations with her son, which were held at her with venomous glee. The verdict, predetermined, hung heavy in the air. On the day of the execution, a stark transformation unfolded. Gone were the jewels and silks, replaced by a plain white dress, symbolising the Queen's descent from royalty to condemned soul. Her once flowing hair, shorn in preparation for the blade, mirrored the fall of her fortunes. As a cart carrying Marie rottled through the streets, the crowd's jeers served as a stark reminder of her fractured relationship with the people. Yet amidst the hatred, she held her head high, her gaze unwavering. Even the priest beside her, offering solace, received only silence. Reaching the scaffold, Marie climbed the steps with a surprising grace, her final words whispered to the executioner, who accidentally stepped on her foot. Pardon me, sir, I did not mean it, resonated with a poignant humanity amidst the brutality. The blade fell, swift and merciless. Marie Antoinette, the woman once crowned queen, was no more. Her head, held aloft for a moment, became a gruesome trophy. But unlike the popular image, it wouldn't parade through the streets, both head and body were laid to rest in an unmarked grave, their final journey shrouded in anonymity. The execution of Marie Antoinette marked a turning point in the French Revolution. It solidified the reign of terror and cemented the Queen's tragic legacy. Whether villain or victim, her story remains a chilling reminder of the volatility of power and the fragility of life even for those born to a crown. The headless queen and the search for closure, Marie Antoinette's restless afterlife. While gravediggers enjoyed their lunch break, a masked figure crept into the cemetery. Madame Tussaud, in famous wax sculpture, cast a severed head of Marie Antoinette, adding a chilling chapter to the queen's tumultuous story. But her tale wouldn't end there. In 1814, King Louis XVIII, fueled by both duty and family sentiment, launched a quest to unearth Marie's remains. With ministers and officials in tow, they exhumed the cemetery grounds on January 18, 1815. Louis XVI's body was found first, followed by Marie's the next day. Her grave held an eerie surprise, quicklime hardening over her coffin had preserved her remains remarkably well. Bones, including the intact skull, lay alongside a stocking resembling those that were worn during her imprisonment. Many moved by the discovery, prayed or even fainted. Scepticism lingered though. Could these truly be the Queen's remains in such a crowded cemetery? Yet the quick climb's preservation, a cross near the grave, and clothing matched her execution attire, and this lent credence to the claim. Even the hair that was unearthed belonged to a woman. With solemn ceremony, the bones and belongings were transported to a candlelit chapel before their final resting place, the royal vault in the Basilica of St. Denis. An eyewitness described the sombre procession, punctuated by minute guns and muffled music, as it wound its way through silent crowds. On the 21st of January, Marie Antoinette, once the Queen of France, found peace beside her husband. The journey was long, the controversy lingered, but finally the headless queen had found rest. A queen resurrected Marie Antoinette's path to final rest. 
Decades after their execution, the ghosts of King Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette finally found peace. In a grand ceremony filled with dignitaries and a solemn feeling, their remains were laid to rest in the royal vault of Basilla of St. Denis. Monsieur, the king's brother, followed by princes and duchesses, filled the choir. Judges, military officers and even young ladies from the royal house bore witness. An air of grandeur mingled with the weight of history. A funeral oration by the Bishop of Troyes echoed through the church, absolving the deceased and paving the way for their descent into the vault. Descending with them, Monsieur and his sons embraced a final moment of connection with their fallen kin. Cannon fire boomed, marking the procession's start, the service and the body's entry into the vault. It was a public spectacle, an official recognition of the royals' lives and deaths. King Louis XVIII, motivated by duty and family ties, had orchestrated this monumental event. Not everyone viewed Marie Antoinette favourably, but her perceived frivolity and lack of sympathy for the people still lingered in whispers. Yet here she was, granted a burial befitting her former title, whether vilified or pitied, the Queen had become a historical figure, her story forever etched in the annals of France. The ceremony wasn't just a burial, it was a symbolic closure, a reconciliation with the past. The headless Queen, once hunted and ridiculed, had finally found a place of rest, albeit not without controversy. Her legacy, a complex tapestry of beauty, tragedy and political intrigue, lives on for us to examine and debate.